travel paid for by Nintendo. What's up everybody, it's Zach from Switch Force, and we are here bringing you our big, juicy, nitty gritty Nintendo Switch Lite discussion full of all those details on the precious little system that comes bathed in either Mango Yellow, Lagoon Blue, or Beloved Gray. And I'm bringing a special guest along for this discussion because I want to give you guys a different perspective, another opinion, I think that's important. And he was able to come to the Switch Lite event with me, so that is gonna be cool. But this discussion actually comes from our brand new podcast that maybe you know about or maybe you don't, it's called Switched On. We're up to episode four, and I've been having a blast recording it. It is so much fun to talk about the Switch games we've been playing this week, to go into bigger detail on some of the stuff that doesn't make it into videos, and then just to tell like life stories and stuff that happens to us, goofy things from behind the scenes of YouTube, Switch Force. It's a lot of fun, a lot of laughs. I think you guys would really enjoy it. And it's here on the channel every freaking Friday. And also now on Apple Podcasts every Friday because a bunch of you said, hey, this would be cool to listen to on the way to work or while doing homework or while falling asleep. And well, that might be a little creepy, but I guess if you want Switch Force to sing you to sleep, we can make that happen. We take a bunch of your questions. It's just a good time. I'll put links in the description below if you want to check it out here on YouTube or if you want to download it, subscribe on... Hello, a new listener. It's a freaking kitten. That's the best way to sell a podcast. Bring a cute animal on board. This is Switch Force the Cat. That's not his name. This is Switch Force the Cat. And he says, subscribe to Switched On. Links in the description below. Enjoy the Switch Lite discussion. Thanks so much, everybody. See you next time. Actually, I'll see you in a second because I'm on this video. Okay, bye. What about the also, Switch Lite? We were... what, about, what about the Switch Lite? Oh, yeah, the Switch Lite was cool, man. No, the, I, the moment you were like, here, you can play. Number one, you passed me Mario Kart. So that was already <laughs> the best. Um, and the only thing is that you decided to pass it to me when we were playing on Rainbow Road, yeah. on Mario Kart 8 Rainbow Road. I hate that stage. I love you so that much, man. I wanted, gotta, I wanted you to you gotta show gotta off your best skills. <laughs> I mean, it, it felt fantastic, and I think in your video, you kind of nailed it in the sense of, like, if you're playing portable, that is the best way to play it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the buttons was, like, the, the way they felt were immediately noticeable, um, cause I remember it, it, it was funny. Like I, I said to you, I was like, well, something felt weird. And you immediately were like, yeah, it was the buttons. They're like mushy. And I was like, wow, <laughs> it is. And I don't play on handheld that often. Right. Um, funny enough, recently I've been playing in handheld almost exclusively. So I, I guess I'm getting You're ready for the switch light. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting ready. Yeah. Subconsciously. Um, but it really was noticeable just how different it felt. Um, but yeah, I think. I think as far as what the system is trying to be, it nailed it 100%. I know a lot of people are like worried about the the drift issue, like the Joy-Con drift issue. And obviously, I don't think there's really a way to predict, figure out if that's a thing. Like we're not going to be there and and playing with it for like, you know, 40 hours. <laughs> but I I'd imagine that by this point they have something worked out <laughs> because they would think, they're not going we'd to like to imagine that they don't want this to be a, a red ring repeat it, it's oh, like God. every console is drifting and we don't know what to do and you have to send it in because you can't take it apart yourself yeah and especially it, it's even worse because at least with the joy con it's like oh you could send it in and get a new one with the the switch light that's attached so a little bit tougher to do um but like with all that said i think it's a fantastic system it again like you know reiterating what you said it's not something that you need it, it is very much a want and the whole time we were there i was like i want this <laughs> i want this right now um yeah, they're, they're just so good at these iterations that really make you feel like it is an upgrade even if it's a, a parallel or even if it's mm -hmm. a in some ways a step back and i think that's just yeah. like the whether you want to call it the magic of nintendo or the trickery of nintendo it's like we came out with the system that you're gonna want even though it's removing some things, because what it does do is it does so well. And yeah. it's interesting because at the event, you know, it's all 20-somethings, 30-somethings, and, and this system is targeted most specifically, I think, to younger players. Mm -hmm. And that's it's interesting that that market, obviously I'm sure they focus test it and all that, but in these videos or these reviews that you're reading or these, these news reports, you're getting the perspective of a more hardcore or an older gamer or someone that, you know, it's it's less targeted toward, and yet the yeah. response is still super positive. And I think that just goes to show, like, when we say they nailed the build quality, they really nailed the build quality. And 
it's not a I felt like the 2DS was one where it was like, okay, this does not make sense for me in really any way unless mm-hmm. I want to be a collector. Yeah. But but here it's like, no, like if you are a portable player, and I, I don't know about you, your hands are bigger than mine, but I like I like how it feels. Like it's a it's it's a better feeling system mm-hmm. minus the D-pad because it's close. Not that the D-pad feels bad. I just the uh, placement was a little bit a little. And it's bit not like it's in a off, weird yeah. place. It's only because. They're closer to the screen. Yeah. And therefore, it would be the same case if the buttons were there, right? It's not the D-pad's fault. It's just that, to me, is the only negative about the smaller form factor. But did you feel like the screen, we didn't lose much? Because I know that was a concern for people. Like, is the screen going to feel much smaller? I didn't feel like it's really Mm -hmm. that big of a difference. Yeah, I I think I agree. A, A huge thing that I was really trying to think up in my head was... Going from, like, going immediately from the regular Switch, like, having played it, you know, hours before that event, and right. then playing the Switch Lite, and even taking out my Switch and holding it, you know, when we were out there, um, really switching between the two wasn't as jarring of an experience as I think people are imagining it to be. It mm. is a lot smaller, but the screen sacrifice, like, is not... Honestly, it. I'm going to be real. If I didn't... If I wasn't told the exact amount, and I didn't see them side by side, I wouldn't think it was as big of a, I guess, I don't want to say, like, because they really did shrink the screen. Like, it's they did, inches. but, yeah, and, and that's the thing, like, you would not be able to guess that number. I don't think you would, mm-hmm. you would even imagine that they did, you know, shrink the screen. It does just feel like it became a tighter system, and I think even what you're talking about with the buttons being a little bit closer to the screen, I could I could have easily just thought that that's what they did. And they kept the screen the same size. Like, it is such a minuscule difference that, you know, it it wasn't something that I was immediately like, oh, well, no, I don't want to play games on this screen. And another thing is, because it is a little bit smaller, like, again, very, very, it, it's such a slight difference. But everything does look a lot tighter. And it does look, like, I, I don't want to say more clear, but it, there is, like, an effect where if things are smaller, they do appear a little bit more crisp. Um and, you know, you pair that with just the look of the Switch Lite, it just looks cleaner. Like, it looks like a, a, a more clean experience rather almost, than... Almost quite literally because it doesn't have our fingerprints on it. Like, we were talking about yes. that, the event. we're like, is it actually looking crisper or is it the fact that we have touched the Switch screen so many times over the last two and a half years that it's gotten a little messed up? Yeah, it's, it's crazy. And it, a lot of it is, like, us wondering how much of this is mental mm-hmm. because the Switch Lite really is such a nice looking and feeling system that it really does in a strange way it feels a cut above the regular switch even though it obviously has some like glaring omissions but it as far as like the system itself if anybody hasn't gotten a switch yet i i still think i would recommend the switch light like i know it's very different and it's not a console anymore it is a handheld but with that same exact library it's kind of hard to not be like yeah, get the Switch Lite. It's $200. You're able to play no all TV. these big games. No TV. No Mario. That is no, true. How are you going to play Super Mario Party and pull out your Ally phone? You can't even call your allies because you can't play multiplayer. Although, <laughs> we did we did break the mold, and we set it up, and we played tabletop light mode, which does yes. work and was fine and was less of an issue. Like, I play tabletop a lot, and mm-hmm. because the screen isn't that much smaller, and as long as you have something to prop the light up against, like, it's really not that bad of a deal. Will it be a problem if you're trying to play four-player multiplayer? Yes, but it, but that's a problem on the Switch. So yeah. I like the fact that, like, I don't know. When we were at E3, we, we first got to the house, and there wasn't there wasn't power. There was something wrong with the house. And so we played Mario Party tabletop with mm-hmm. four people. And, like, it wasn't ideal, but it was still fun. And you can do yeah. that with the Switch Lite, e- even with Mario Party, as long as you have, you know, the extra controller. So multiplayer isn't out of the question. And I, I think that there is a part that maybe is an intangible that we're not able to really identify with which is that like sometimes kids like small cool things that they huddle up and play together like back in back in my day my my younger years in the last century i had all these little like handheld little games of like handheld yahtzee and handheld boggle and they're like really tiny keychain versions and there was something Mm -hmm. really fun about that there was a game boy micro that was the size of a freaking eraser right it was super small and so i think there is a part of kids that like ooh, getting like a travel size version of scrabble is is exciting and so 
maybe for them getting to set up their own little Switch Lite and play with their friends, maybe it's not as bad as we we would think it is. Yeah, and I, I think that's definitely what Nintendo's going for. I think this this system's kind of a catch-all in the sense that it it definitely feels like it's being marketed towards kids with the the bright, like, very, very attractive colors. And, of course, the fact that it is smaller, it's it feels a lot better, so it doesn't feel like it's going to break. Like, my, my baby cousin has a Switch, and every time he holds it, I almost have a heart attack because <laughs> I'm just so afraid that it's going to, like, he's going to crack the Joy-Cons off. Um, but... It, so in that sense, there's there's that side of it where it's like this does definitely feel like it's built for kids. But also, like you said, everyone who went to this event was older, and mm-hmm. I don't I haven't seen since everybody started talking about it. I haven't seen like a single negative thing. Like the only negative is the fact that the switch already exists. So like for some people, this might be you know Redundant. something that you yeah. can pass exactly. But none of the I guess negative comments come for the switch light itself it's not like oh this system's bad right. it's just oh well if you have a switch you don't need this that's the only negative so i think that alone just goes to show kind of the quality of what it is setting out to do and how well it does it it wants to be a handheld only switch and i think it nails that um yeah it, it really, so yeah it really does i mean and, and to me what i've kind of settled on is why it's sort of for me a little more difficult to get a full grip on than some of the last it's really actually nice to grip because it's like a matte finish but then yeah. some of the other nintendo iterations is because often cheaper means worse build quality or worse ergonomic experience and i've settled mm-hmm. on the switch light is a better build with less features and i think that's yeah. just like kind of confusing to the brain of like it's cheaper and has less features but it's also better like weird mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um i've also settled on that the switch light is basically the true realization of the Wii U gamepad. Yeah. Because now it doesn't detach. <laughs> they did it. Now there's no Joy-Con. It's just one little nice little consistent unit, and it plays awesome games, and it has a touchscreen. It's got gyro, and it works, and you don't need the TV. It's it's the it's the Wii U game, gamepad realized. I mean, I know that's what the Switch is, it. basically, but here, since there's no Joy-Con detaching, it's like, no, no, this really is a gamepad evolved. Yeah, and it is interesting that they... You know, it's funny you say that. I wonder how how far back in development of like the actual switch did they think that this was going to be Mm. a step? Like, did they know out the gate that they were going to put out the actual, you know, regular switch and then a couple years down the line have this handheld, uh, which, you know, to me, because like you said, it really is the Wii U gamepad finally coming into its own, like being able to play triple A or like these exclusive Nintendo games, these first party games that, you know, Until the Switch, we couldn't really imagine playing anywhere. Mm -hmm. Um, But the Switch gave us that, and now we have it in the most compact we've seen thus far. Um, So it is is kind of funny to think, like, maybe the the Wii U was this incredible idea that just didn't catch on. They didn't (laughs) didn't have the tech to to make it fully realized. But now, yeah, now here here we are. It's coming back. And the important thing is, like, the colors. So I've seen camps in all places. We've got the, the it's like Fire Emblem Three Houses all over again. We've got the yellow camp. <laughs> we've got the turquoise camp. We even have a we even have a gray camp. I've seen camp gray. They they yeah, are small but mighty. So yes. So my camp was turquoise, like for sure. And then I got there and <laughs> and that yellow is really nice. It is a yeah. sorbet. It is a sherbet style yellow that just mm-hmm. it, it's got a feel to it and. It's funny because because my brother was the yellow Game Boy Color player and I was the turquoise Game Boy Color player, so we were talking about like maybe we swap for Switch Lite just to be weirdos and just to like throw it back to freaking nineteen ninety eight. Uh-huh. But you're you're team yellow, right? I'm team yellow, man. Since still since gonna say that way, yeah. I I you know I will say the other two colors, even the gray, has grown on me a little more. Still <laughs> definitely the the last in in which one I want, but I think seeing them in person. Man, it does it does make it a little harder because you're like, all right, these two like especially the the turquoise and the yellow I think are just such gorgeous shades like they yeah. they really 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 pop in, in ways that like you know I I have the uh, Pikachu and Eevee Joy Cons and I always right. thought that the Pikachu yellow was like a great yellow 
I took that out and we had it side by side with the Switch Lite. And the I yellow felt, battle. I felt like I had to go home. Like I felt like I lost that fight yeah, and I, I had to go home. Yeah. This yellow is a I, better yellow. <laughs> it's such a – like I don't know how it is that vibrant. Like it does not feel real at times. Like yeah, they are so nice. It's like they found the like adamantium color to, to make these things out of. Or yeah, exactly. And, and the gray, I will say, like I thought was a little bit lighter – um, so seeing that it was like a darker, I mean, almost black, like it was like an off black. Um, I like that a lot more than just it being the switch joy con gray like that. I will say I, I prefer yeah. it being this color. And again, with the ad scented white, like buttons and yeah, the triggers, that was nice, man. It, it gives it like even more of this kind of like, like creamy feel because it's like a it's like a cream Ooh. white like Ooh, cream <laughs> you know what i mean switch light feel all these colors. yeah, got, yeah and then you mix it with the colors and you just get this like i don't know it's it really is it's this eye is candy why, this is why it. mario was in the tropical setting it wasn't for sunshine it's because yeah the it wasn't sunshine switch light, everything <laughs> just like ice cream and freaking sorbet yeah. I, I think the only the only like dagger here is that the best looking one doesn't come out for two months and so i know <laughs> it's like if you want to switch light a lot of people I've, I've read are like just waiting which is it sucks that they yeah. won't get to experience it for two months it's great that they'll get to get the zacian and zamazenta edition but it's like mm -hmm. ugh, i wish that one was just there at launch because i feel like i feel like that's the one that most people want yeah and, and like we've talked about this before i find it so weird that they're not launching it early they could. and just preloading the game like they did it with smash like yeah. smash's special edition switch came out literally i think two months before smash did and so people were just sitting there with the game pre-downloaded and nobody was complaining nobody was like oh man i'm not gonna pick this up um so it is weird to me that they have this strong design that i'm pretty sure everybody would prefer over the three already incredible colors, and it's just like, nope, you gotta wait. I think it's probably a chance to, like, it gives them a second oomph, right? Because you launch the Switch Lite, you get all the hardcore mm -hmm. people that want Zelda, and men are just diehards, or, you know, pre-holiday rush, and then you get that second holiday bump, like, ooh, something brand new, and it, it, it gives it fresh life. Obviously, they'll up the marketing for Switch Lite before holidays, but now yeah. you have a really cool console to go with it. I think the best news out of the Switch Lite event is that well, it's kind of like the Switch Lite itself. The best news is also the worst news that it's awesome and therefore, hey, say goodbye to $200 because you're probably going to want mm -hmm. one even if you already have a Switch. And it is a first world problem type solution. But like part of me is like, okay, I'll, I'll eShop on the Switch Lite and I'll like main game on the, the dock Switch. And like I know that is so freaking silly, but <laughs> it, may, it may be how I go. I may, depending on how easy that transfer is, I may like... Because you can still take it, you can still take the regular switch on the go. So if I throw Doom Eternal on there and want to play a handheld, it's okay. But maybe I'll just make yeah. the switch light like, hey, I'm gonna throw you know a 64 gig memory card in there and just load it up with all my favorite roguelites and all my favorite indies and just have that mm -hmm. be my like, this is my my eShop boy ready to go. Yeah, exactly. Just keep that one by your bed, you know. So if you ever <laughs> wake up and you just can't go back to sleep, you just grab it. Yeah, it is it is interesting because I think that's kind of the bigger thing that people probably don't think about is once this switch light is in your hand what do you do with it? Like yeah, what, 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 look? <laughs> what does it do that your switch doesn't? And I think that's kind of the big question that like, th there's two types of people. There are the people who already thought that. And then there are the people who are going to think that once yeah. they have the switch, <laughs> I'm definitely the second type of person. I'm going to get that switch light. You know, it's already pre-ordered. I'm going to get it. And I'm going to be like, all right, well, like you said, what games do I put on this? Like, when do I use this? Um, right. So it is first world in, in that sense of things. But I do think that it will be a lot easier to travel with. So I, I think there's a little more credence to like, if you're running out the house, you just grab this. Right. You know what I mean? Throw and and a USB-C cable and you're good. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? So in that sense, like, that's kind of what it's going to be for me. It's just going to be the handheld side of things. Um, and it's going to alleviate that for my other switch. But I think if I'm still going like on a trip like this where I'm I'm going to a different state and I'm going to be away for a while, I'm going to pack my dock. I'm going to bring my regular oh, yeah. switch. Okay. okay. Yeah, and I'm See, just going that, to – and, and that's going to be my thing. When I wouldn't bring it. Except I've got the weird YouTuber problem, which I know is like uber specific, but there is a reason for me to have both in that sense because I can't record the Switch Lite, which – it's mm -hmm. a it's a feature that ninety nine point eight percent of the people don't care about, but it's one that that bugs me because it would it would be nice because now I, I there are games I have to keep on 
the regular switch if I want to record them, if I want to yeah. capture them in any way. Um, or just double it up, I guess. If Well, that's probably not going to be possible. I don't, I don't <laughs> I think mean, the, I don't think the transfer will be that friendly. Although there is Switch game sharing, so that's that's a thing that's you know workable or whatever. My my yeah. cat is moving my mouse. I'm so sorry. I'm drawing on your face with the the mouse screen. Um, he wants a Switch Lite. Everyone wants a Switch Lite. Even the animals want the freaking Switch Lite. The event itself, though, just to give a little background here. So like the way this worked is it was an hour and a half slot, and we we went up there and they like bring you up at your appointment time. And I'd say there's probably six or seven outlets groups you know like either representing a channel or representing a website yeah and we each had our own area person and switch light so we were like assigned like here's your switch light here's your person here's your area we got i thought we got a prime real estate area we got in front of the window oh, for sure on a nice little couch some people got like a table but we got a couch mm -hmm. um the pillows matched the colors of the switch light so the, the decor yeah. was was very consistent and then uh I guess I was a little picky. It's like they assigned us a gray switch light with Breath of the Wild. <laughs> Off the bat, yeah. And I was like, okay, well, the coolest part about the switch light <laughs> for, at first blush is the colors. So can we please have a, have a turquoise? And they're like, you can have all the colors. And I was like, dude, like taking candy from a baby. That was easy. And they had Mario Kart 8 Deluxe on the yellows. They had Mario Maker on the blue. And they had Breath of the Wild on the gray. Um, so that is what we played. Yeah. Their game choice was interesting. I was hoping that they would have that be an opportunity to like show off more astral chain and luigi's mansion or mm -hmm. link's awakening that comes out on the switch light like that would have been same day smart yeah. but alas it was older games but i guess maybe that also kept the focus on the system because you're like yeah. mindlessly going through mario kart mindlessly going through breath of the wild and it just then allowed you to focus more on the feature set so perhaps it was a genius move a better choice yeah on their part um and you kind of just got to play it they had people there that you know ask if you have any questions you could ask questions we got to go over to this like lockbox glass cabinet display area that i wonder if that'll go in any like major stores like i wonder if that was just for the event and gamescom or if that'll be like throw that stuff in like the freaking times square target or you know best buy or mm -hmm. whatever and and let that let that go to work i can see that but so they let us like record a little bit in front of there and then you know obviously we got to capture all the switch light stuff for the the later embargo um but they were they were surprisingly flexible at this event. Usually it's a game based thing, so you're sitting at your station. But what was cool about this event and what I loved was we got to like move around. Like the person yeah. had to come with the system. We couldn't just like run off with it. But they're <laughs> like, <Just> leave. <laughs> hey, like you want to go outside? You want to sit over here? You want to? What do you want to do? And they let us uh, kind of move around freely and experience the switch light in different locations, inside, outside, which was great for testing out the system and great for the, you know, the the video shots. Um, yeah. But it just felt like kind of like you said, like this commercial experience, like. Welcome to the world of Switch Lite. You've stepped into this room where the only thing that exists is the Switch Lite. And now you get to experience mm -hmm. it for an hour and a half. And um, didn't feel rushed, didn't feel hassled. They had water bottles and some light snacks, some little like uh, slider sandwiches, and uh, mm -hmm. a few other things that we had no care about because yeah, we, were we didn't all worried <laughs> we about the Switch Lite the entire yeah. time, which is kind of how those events go. You're like so focused. You're like, I don't care. I mean, I, we got water. We mixed up our water bottles, which was. We did. That was a struggle. And then we just, Zach was just carrying two water bottles at the bad. exact like, same amount of water. They had so much. I was like, I don't want to just dump these. That looks so, so bad. Yeah. So we, we dealt with our water bottle problem. We messed around with the switch light. And we were on the same roof as freaking Tobey Maguire and Spider-Man. Yeah. I, dude, I, I went home and I immediately looked up the scene because I was like, this is definitely. So like Zach said, there was a kind of an outdoor area. It was this beautiful. I mean, like that roof was just gorgeous. Yeah. Um. And so they were like, oh, yeah, you want to take this outside? And we were shocked because we didn't know that that was an option. Right. Um, and I, I believe we were, like, probably the first two of our group yeah. that went out there. Because I think wait, before wait, we can, that... We, we can go in the mysterious beyond? Like, there's something beyond yeah, the walls? <laughs> exactly. So there's just a security guard who opened the door for us. And then, boom, we're outside. And we get to play out there. So we were out there. And then I was like, is this the Spider-Man roof? And the guy who was following us was like, knew this... It. I, you know what's funny? I I mean, I was young when that movie came out. I'm yeah. pretty sure that was the first one, so I don't yeah. even know how that memory stuck. But, yeah. man, I, I saw that, and I was like, this is the Spider-Man roof. So we were on that roof, and we were just chilling, talking about Switch. And yeah, that's another thing. I think everyone there was, like, very nice, because obviously, for, from my experience, I don't often go to events like these, but I'd imagine, like, <laughs> in my head, it's a lot more cold, you know, no. like... Because you're, you're with all these officials, and, and, you know, I don't know. But 
I mean, we were making small talk the entire time. They were very nice. If they saw us filming, they like would even like I don't know. It was just <laughs> it was constantly like, oh, how can we help you with this? Or like, oh, you did a good job. That shot looks great. Like, you oh, nailed yeah, it. exactly. There was like, all right. <laughs> there was one part where where Zach kind of we we recorded some footage. And they were just like, "Wow, that was fantastic!" And it was just—it was just really nice. I think everybody there was like super sweet. And um, yeah, it, like like you said before, I actually just thought about it while you were saying it. I think it probably was a smarter idea having the older games on it because yeah. we actually have a reference right. to being like, "Oh, well, we played this already on right. the actual what Switch, so like now yeah. how does it transfer?" Yeah, and and I think that's a bigger testament to the Switch Lite: the fact that we probably in the moment didn't think that like it didn't feel out of place it felt exactly like we were mindlessly playing but you know like a little better a little but better, a little better is, yeah it, but it eats away at me that it's a little better because it should for <laughs> cheaper be a little worse but it's a step forward it's years later it's it's super nice and, mm-hmm. and it was you know nintendo are always super nice like the people at events are i've never had a cold experience you know it's, yeah you know occasionally things are a little awkward but no they're always always super nice and always eager to help and that one in particular I think they wanted everyone to have as much help as possible to showcase, you know, the Switch Lite. Um, and, and also, just so people know, I guess, like, at those events, there's no requirements of what you have to say or what you can't say or, or how you have to cover it. It's not it's not like a very, like, curated experience in that way. They just give you an embargo, and then you can say whatever the heck you want. I mean, if we hated the Switch Lite, we would have told you we hated the Switch Lite. Yeah. <laughs> luckily, yeah. or unluckily, if you wanted to save money, uh, we... We didn't hate it. it. We we liked it a lot, yeah. and I think, I think if anyone gets it, I don't think you're gonna be upset. Like maybe you don't get mm-hmm. it because you don't need it, but there's no way that I, I think someone gets this and thinks, oh, this sucks because yeah, it is. I just, I, it's it makes me very excited for the Switch Pro because yes, the Switch Pro will probably have Joy-Con. Yes, it'll be dockable and portable. But if they can take some of the build quality advancements they've made here to that. And find a mm-hmm. way to maybe make the Joy-Con a little less bendy, make the system feel a little more cohesive. Then that is going to be the best of both worlds. And, and then on top of it, have ac- extra features. You know that that's the exactly. one that I think everyone's most excited for. And so the Switch Lite has proven to be a really nice alternative. But the Switch Pro will probably be a must-have for for most people, um, given that it will add and incorporate some of these elements. I'm sure it'll have great battery life and a great screen. We saw like the mm-hmm. Sharp. Um, the reference where Sharp is making screens for some Nintendo thing, and you know probably yeah. that. So probably gonna be a while, but but that's one to look forward to. In the meantime, Switch Lite is pretty fantastic. It's great. 